thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our next hot topic, and this one says Nigeria needs $35 billion yearly for infrastructure expenditure, and that is being said by the federal government. Our guest today is Shegun Shokbiton. He's a chairman, Accountability, Candle, and Transparency Network. Good morning, Mr. Shegun. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure having you. So the presidency on Tuesday um, had, you know, come out to talk about needing 35 billion naira, um, sorry, 35 billion dollars annually for the next 16 years. That's from now till 2040. Um, for the next 16 years to be able to just cater for our our infrastructure expenditure. Now, my question is, you know, isn't that a lot of money, or is it that is that you know, such a small amount, especially for the fact that we need a lot of infrastructure in Nigeria. Now, when we talk about infrastructure, we talk about roads, we talk about hospitals, we talk about so many things that needs to be done. What do you think about this figure? And this is according to the Renewed Hope Agenda. So what do you think about this statement from the president? Um, well, if you, if you take the data that is available out there, um, as a reference point, and uh, depending on whose data you are looking at, you get different um, different um, opinions. Um, uh, you 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 find that the the plan from the president is a good plan. I think we should start from there. Mm. The plan is a good plan. It's important to have a plan. It's important to have a long term plan, mm -hmm. and this is a long term plan. This is a plan that will outlive his administration yes you know even if he does eight years in office the plan will still be running and i think first i must applaud that i think that that's one of the things that has been missing you know in our in our in, in the way we have gone about the governance question in nigeria over the years mm. um people tend to look at things from how it will affect them um you know as politicians they pursue projects that they can take credit for um, usually, especially around elections. Um, so, so I think this is a departure from that. If, if you ask me, I think it's probably the first time uh, that I'm seeing something as deliberate as this, as clear, as clearly articulated as this from any president that we've had. Um, uh, under President Buhari, we had a situation where he continued the infrastructure projects of his predecessors, mm -hmm. and we applauded that you know, at that time that this was, that was unprecedented. It was the first time also that we're seeing a situation where a president will come on board and say, I will not execute any new projects. I just want to finish the projects that are already on ground. That was a good one. And we can see the benefits of that now. Uh, people are enjoying the Legacy by the Expressway. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, um, addition to our infrastructure stock as a country. People are enjoying the Legacy Badon rail um, project, you know, again, has made a huge difference um, in the lives of people in that in that uh, sector of the in that area of the country, um, and there are a number of other projects like that. The second Niger Bridge, you know, and all of that. He didn't start those projects. He 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 continued. He met them on ground and continued them. So credit to Buhari on that, and now credit to President Inubu for putting laying down a plan that will outlive him. Um, having said that, I think it's also important to note that uh, perhaps. The president needs to be more ambitious. Um, so according to data out there, that's where I started from initially before I decided to just backtrack and just mm. give the credit where it's due first. <laughs> according to data, our infrastructure deficit as a country ranges, depending on who you are listening to, ranges from between $3 trillion to $3.3 trillion. In other words, in order for us to um, catch up and fix the infrastructure deficit that we have, we need to spend $3 trillion. Now, uh, a $35 billion um, per year plan would amount to $350 billion in 10 years, $700 billion in, <laughs> in 20 years, mm -hmm. um, $1.4 trillion in 40 years, um, and $3.8 trillion in 80 years. So putting it in context, you, you see that this is a very good plan. You've got to start from somewhere, but it needs to be said that it's not enough. And we can. So in order to, 
to meet that infrastructure deficit that we're talking about within a reasonably short time frame. Let's say 20 years, for example. Say, oh, in 20 years, we want to close the infrastructure gap in this country. You need to raise $3 trillion divided by 20. So, so you're talking of about $150 billion um, dollars per year. So, so the 35 billion naira per year begins to look really small, you know, mm. when you look at it against that. However, we again, a balance. If you flip the coin and people who would applaud this would say, huh, what are you talking about? The entire budget of the country <laughs> is <laughs> about 30, 30 billion dollars, roughly, depending on the exchange rate at the time that you're looking at it. Um, yeah. So the 27, 27 trillion, 28 trillion budget that we have this year, for example, um, is uh, if you use, let me just do the calculation quickly. I mean, if you use um, um, an exchange rate, the official exchange rate as at today or in the budget, I think is, uh, I think the budget was still referencing uh, 700, 700 um, 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 naira to the dollar. Mm. So even if I use, even if I use 700 naira to the dollar and you say 28 trillion, you know, um, <laughs> That, that gives you uh, 40 billion dollars mm. you know and i'm being very generous if you decide to use you know the prevailing exchange rates that 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 cuts down to half you are talking of 20 billion dollars as our budget so this is saying that the budget the national budget aside notwithstanding we will spend 35 billion dollars every year outside of um what oh, we're budget. budgeting to spend you know in the country as a whole so this this is this is is, is a is, is a good thing coming mm -hmm. from that perspective, especially when you realize that the funding plan, the plan for funding this, um, would revolve around um, a mixed a mixed basket of funding sources, mm -hmm. government revenues, private sector investments, private sector loans, developmental loans. Um, 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 funds, funds from uh, from the various markets, um, funds from uh, insurance companies, pension fund organizations. You know, I, I like that. I like the fact that it's looking at a wide variety of funding sources, which means that we're not just looking at government revenue, which is exactly what we've been saying. You know, all this while. Yeah. So um, I think it's a it's a plan that needs to be applauded, but we need to do more. It's important for us to understand that the deficit we're talking about is heavy. So we need to we need to be more ambitious. I, I, I would love for the president, you know, he he has always prided himself for being somebody who is audacious, who is, you know, who is bold. You know, the way he very, very um, uh, imperiously said subsidy was gone. <laughs> um, he needs to apply, yeah, he needs to apply that type of bravado to these types of projects. This is where that type of courage is needed, actually. You know, he needs to be bold, he needs to be brave, he needs to be audacious, and actually go for the numbers that will make a fundamental difference. Now, again, let's put a bit of context into this for those that may not understand. What, what do we mean by an infrastructure, the infrastructure expenditure, the infrastructure deficit? What, what infrastructure are we talking about? Mainly, we'll be talking about roads, yeah. we'll be talking about rail, we'll be talking about aviation, you know, the airport infrastructure, and we'll be talking about power. In my opinion, if you fix the power problem and you fix the rail problem, you will place Nigeria on a pedestal to achieve um, um, exponential growth mm. within a very short period of time. So if we apply these funds, for example, to fixing the power problem over a four-year period, and you know the power problem can be solved in a four-year period, please, it's important for, for us to, to note this. Even if you want to lay a completely fresh transmission infrastructure, mm. you don't need 30 years to do this. Maybe you talk about 10 years, like let's junk the existing uh, national grid and just build a new grid. You don't need 20 years, you don't need 10 years. You know, with the adequate funding, you can build a new grid if you want to, but, but of course you don't need to build a new grid. Technology has gotten to a point where you can do mini grids, for example. So you can have regional grids. You can have um, off-grid solutions. You know, you can have captive off-grid off solutions that are integrated into one network, if you like. There are so many potential solutions to the power problem. So we can fix the power problem you know, to a reasonable degree in, in four years. 
we can actually achieve 10, maybe even 20,000 megawatts before the end of this first four years of this administration. We can do it. 20,000 megawatts. It's possible. You know, but we need the will. We need focus. We need, um, uh, we need to be very uh, deliberate. We need, the, we need planning, you know, and all of that to, mm -hmm. to achieve this. So um, I think that's the general framework to look at the, this, this news item from. It's a good plan, but mm -hmm. there's a need to do far more to achieve the infrastructure stock we need to unlock the potential of Nigeria, to take Nigeria from this perennial giant that has perennial potential that is perennially unfulfilled. <laughs> we need to get to the point where the potential of Nigeria is unlocked and fulfilled. We can do it in four years. And I dare say, regardless of the way, the manner of the emergence of this president, regardless of the opposition that he currently still has, regardless of the large chunk of Nigerians that are still unhappy that he is president, if he does this and he succeeds at it in four years, I can guarantee you, mm. even his most virulent opposers will vote for him for a second time. And this is the point that politicians must get to understand that, look, if you do good for a majority of the people, you do good for yourself. You, yeah. you, you, you lay down your legacy. Um, whether you want to talk about pecuniary, um, uh, mundane benefits that you gain in office, or you want to talk about legacy and you know um, uh, issues that matter, you know through through, through time, you do good for yourself. Mm -hmm. So so it's a very good plan. Um, I, I wish they would be more ambitious with it, but it's a good start, and okay. it should be commended. Yeah. All right. So when you were speaking, I mean, I was just listening to you, and you touched on power. Now we still do not have twenty-four hours power in Nigeria, and. It, it reminds me of the fact that Nigeria isn't a spring chicken. I mean, Nigeria is about 64 years um, on October 1st. So what have been the main challenges for our infrastructure development in Nigeria? Because you would not expect a country that is already 64 to still be struggling with infrastructure year in, year out. And then you see all of these presidents come in with their administration. And it just, it seems as though um, continuity is, is, is a challenge. Now, I know that President Bola, um, sorry, um, Muhammad Buhari had sorry. come in, yes, and he started the, pres the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. Now, with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he's continuing it, but has changed the name to Renewed Hope um, Infrastructure Development Fund. So we're seeing some form of continuity. But what have been the main challenges over the years that is just now we're realizing that we need to um, start to look at this and start to develop our, our, our infrastructure in Nigeria? Mm. Um, that, that's a, it's a deep question, if you ask me, mm. um, because um, we're basically going to try to uh, tackle the entire what is wrong with Nigeria question, actually. <laughs> um, um, so, so I think the first thing is to understand, um, to, to cut ourselves some slack as a country and understand that we are the biggest black nation in the world. We, are the, we have the largest population in Africa, uh, I think the sixth largest in the world. Um, by population, we're big. By land mass, we're big. Um, I think we're the fourth largest or fifth largest uh, country in Africa by land mass, with our 928,000 square kilometers of land. Um, and on top of that, you've got the religious complexities, You've got the topographic complexities. You've got the ethnic complexities. Nigeria is a complex country. Nigeria is um, probably comparable only to the United States of America when you take all of these things, you know, and try to compare like for like. Um, there are a number of countries, maybe in Asia, that also um, have this similar uh, potpourri of issues that Nigeria faces. Um, so. What this means is that in order for you to achieve inclusive, sustainable development over a long period of time, there has to be, it, it can't happen by accident. It's impossible mm. for it to happen by accident. It's going to happen because somebody sat down and planned. You're going to have to sit down and have a national 
developmental plan that will be painstakingly executed across several administrations because we have term limits. We're not running a dictatorship. We're not running a monarchy. So this has been the real bane of our development. The real reason that we have been unable to move forward as a country is that as a result of the complexities that we, that is our reality, it's impossible for development to happen accidentally. It's mm. impossible. Um, so that lack of purpose, mm. um, deliberate design in our approach to the governance question is the answer to the question you asked, is the reason why where we are. Um, so, so what you have is we, we've got, um, I, I've deliberately stayed away from the corruption issue. Of course, at the base of this, if you want to say, why don't we then have that um, um, purposefulness in planning? Yeah, you, you will come to the corruption question. But yeah. before we even talk about that, it's, it's the fact that every administration that comes on board, just like I said earlier, every administration, with the exception of President Muhammad Buhari, you know, credit to him. And that, I think, will be one of this. When, when his story is told, when the story of Nigeria is told on the long, you know, 20, 40 years from today, one of the good things that will be said about him will be the fact that he continued the legacy of his predecessor. It's a very important issue. Um, so uh, every politician comes on board and undoes what his predecessor did. Everyone, with the exception of Buari. Um, and, and with that, you can never achieve development. Yeah, I mean, just imagine that um, the United Arab Emirates and Dubai, with Dubai, you know, in particular, has achieved the kind of development that they've achieved right in our lifetime. If you're a 40-year-old Nigerian, you were already born and Dubai was a desert. If you're 40 years old, and here we are today, everybody, not just Nigerians, everybody from all over the world troops to that country and to that city, um, you know, to just gape and wonder who and are, to say, wow, you know, at the kind of wonders that, that they, they, they've achieved in that country. And we're not talking of just infrastructure and tourism, even in the quality of life of their citizens, you know. So the reason they were able to do that was that there was a plan. And the plan was implemented to the letter over a 30-year period. Here we are today. So for Nigeria, we need to have a plan. We need to have a plan that is sustainable. We need to have a plan that will be implemented by successive governments, regardless of political affiliation. Whether you are APC, PDP, Labour Party, SDP, NNPP, whatever party you come from, once you assume the office of president, once you assume the office of governor, once you assume local government chairmanship, there should be a template that you meet on ground, that you just pick up and continue from where your predecessor left off. Sure, you can have little modifications based on your own personal philosophy, based on your own temperament, based on your own human peculiarities, but there has to be a plan that we are implementing as a country until we arrive at a point where we have a national development plan that is encoded in law that must be followed by successive administrations mm. we will not solve our power problem we will not solve our um, um, education institution problems we will not solve our healthcare institution problems we will not solve our infrastructure road infrastructure transportation infrastructure problems we will simply grasp in bits and pieces mm. at these issues and solve them part time. So, for example. Okay, so I just want to ask one last job. question because we need to go, yes. right? Um, okay. I just want you to answer this in one minute. So, now, I, I mean, this is great. We need $35 billion a year for the next 16 years. But how is this going to, you know, drive the growth of our economy? So when it comes to like employment opportunities, the value chain, the, 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 the value of the Nigerian lives pretty much, how is this going to impact um, us as Nigerians? If, if the government spends $35 billion on infrastructure alone mm. in 2025, I'm, I'm leaving out 2024 because I assume it to take, we're already in March, Yes. nine months left in 2024, so let's assume that the nine months will be used to, to, to implement this mm. and get it up and running, and it's now sitting and flowing fully by 2025. So Nigeria implements this plan for 2025, and we spend $35 billion in 2025 on infrastructure. Our economy will grow significantly. Mm. Um, how will it impact it? 
just the spend alone, just the fact that you are going to throw out about 30 trillion naira, you know, in addition to your 20 trillion, 25 trillion, 30 trillion budget. So we're talking of a 30, a 60 trillion potentially, a 60 trillion budget for 2020, 2020, uh, 25. Obviously, Nigeria will grow. Um, employment will happen because it is people that are going to implement this infrastructure project, isn't it? Um, yeah. And there will be the trip pull down effect of the monies as the money is flowing through those projects. Mm -hmm. You have contractors, you know, that are you know going to be engaged and all of that. So it will definitely impact employment. It will all definitely right. impact the quality of life because as those infrastructure projects then come on stream, you know, then the quality of life of people will also begin to improve. Well. Hopefully, that's what is going to be done and we'll just look at how it happens and hopefully corruption doesn't, you know, rear its ugly head and all Nigerians would just be happy saying we have a better economy it and will. we have good I'm sorry, it will, but yeah. um, <laughs> we'll right. let's hope we make it better. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's been amazing having a conversation with you. Thank you. Okay, Thanks we'll be speaking. Me. Have a good day. You too. All right, we've been speaking with Shagun Shokuton. He's a chairman, accountability founder, and transparency network. And we've just been talking about the fact that the federal government has said they need $35 billion yearly for infrastructure expenditure. And this is to happen from um, now till 2040. So we're looking at 16 years. Anyways, that's the size of the show. We have to wrap it up now. It's been amazing having a breakfast with you today. I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Rupert. Have an amazing day.